did he cross the line? What happened? I mean, how does it go from kind of playful, fun stuff to assault? You know, what can you say and how can you uh, describe the situation? Yeah, it's actually something, you know, I, for two and a half years, I have been testifying on and, you know, explaining things away. Every text message, you know, the video, it all has an explanation. Well, those text messages are bad, though. Lindsay, you keep bringing the text and I don't even want to, you know, totally kill you on these texts. But I, as a person that, you know, I, listen, these texts, let's look at right here. What does that mean? Next victim star pitcher for the Dodgers. That's text one. That's kind of bad, Lindsay. What is that? I mean, I know you're saying this is no context, and I'm sure you're being sarcastic. I'm guessing. I mean, well, but what the hell does that mean? Next victim. Yeah, and this is, you know, exactly what Trevor wanted to do was random pick three or four texts and weave it into a narrative where I just look horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but so, you know, when I explain that and in, in my deposition and different things, um, I'm like you, I like to joke. I'm very sarcastic, sometimes inappropriate. Anyone who knows me will know that. Um, and these are private, you know, text messages with my friends and uh, agreed victim is not the word there, but um, what I, you know, my my past, I've been involved with um, other baseball players. Uh, that was my world at the time. And it was a funny way, you know, I had already dated baseball players and it was a funny, sarcastic way to say, oh, here's the next one, you know, that I'm gonna, try to get attention from and it was a lot of ego and you know attention seeking behavior which is what i can own and what he can't do is own any part but i can totally own the the attention seeking behavior um but these texts you know in a grand scheme don't address what happened at all this was before any of you know our interactions or anything like that so what happened though so so he so in the next text he says i need daddy to choke me out then then the third one it says being an absolute whore to try to get in on his 51 million. And I have to be honest, when I read these text messages, I get a little sexually aroused. But I, I think that's just because I'm insane. But, uh, I mean, wh what happened? He choked you out. He beat you up. Because in that one video, you were smiling after it. So, and, 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 you know, you sent me that one phone call that we can't play. He did admit that he hit you in the phone call. He said that. He said, yeah. But he said it was consensual. So, it's like, I mean, he said she said at this point, right? So, what, what happened, in your opinion? Totally. I think there's several points I can hit on um, those other text messages just to address those other horrible ones that are just horrifying to be read out loud to. Um, but I think that, uh, like I said, out of context, you know, the next line under that is, oh, you know, my friend saying, can't wait for you to be a rich baseball wife. There was never text that intermingled violence with finances or anything like that. It was just a way for them to weave this narrative. Um, so, I mean, when you ask me what happened, um, it's probably the longest story in the world. I think that video of me in the, in the bed the next morning definitely raises a lot of eyebrows. Um, yeah, cause your face didn't look, your face didn't look that bad, but then I saw other photos where you had black eyes. So what was that from the same thing? I, that's, I was, I was confused. Yeah. So there's another thing that hasn't been public was when my entire body, um, was photographed by, uh, it was called a SART exam. Um, so really the timing of that video, how I, what really happened was all of that. I did not make up an accusation about what he did to me. All of that went down. I have the pictures to prove it. I have the phone call that directly aligns, you know, with no denial of doing all of those things. Um, so that video the next morning, you know, when I'm still trying to, I hadn't seen all everything that had happened in my body. I really had no idea. Um, and just full of emotion. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist to know what happens after the body takes that kind of, um, experience. Uh, but my cousin had Snapchatted me and he knew I was over there and he kind of had said, you know, Hey, how's it going? And in my mind at that point, you know, that was probably like, 20, 30 minutes before I left Bauer's house, I, you know, was thinking like, there's no way I can tell anyone what happened. First of all, it's so embarrassing because it ended up with me crying and shaking and it was just so embarrassing. And so I record that to just send back to my cousin, like, Hey, everything, you know, is fine. Um, so that is exactly what happened there with me of just trying to rally and didn't think I would ever say anything about what happened at that point in time. Um, and then I get real fired up about this, um, is, you know, so that video is taken with no lights on in the room, um, on Snapchat, it was taken and saved to the app. So a lot of differences there between natural light and all that stuff. Um, and it and takes a minute for a bruise to come up. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't, it's not just in, a bruise takes a minute to come up. So yeah. 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 Yes. Any normal person, you know, can see uh, that bruises will take time. That video was taken maybe four hours after everything happened. So 
Um, I took that and I think, and I, you know, said this straight in my deposition, if you zoom in, the scratches are all there, you know, you can't see if there's a shadow on my face. So what I did was, and these of course never been public either. Um, some of them have been, um, I get in the car about 20, maybe 10, 20 minutes after that and take selfies of my, my entire face and there that you can, you know, see the bruise just starting. Um, and the scratching and all of that stuff. And so then as time went on, I wasn't aver- aware of anything else on my body, um, but those did develop, you know, within 20, 24 hours. Um, so, you know, and over and over again, those pictures of me in the car with the bruising starting to v- develop, the metadata continually handed over and over again to v- verify that nothing was filtered or anything like that. You know, the metadata has been bulletproof this entire case. Well, what do you say to the people that, you know, now that you've settled the lawsuit, they're going to say, well, you were lying. What do you say to those people that are calling you a liar, Lindsay? It's a great question. Like I said, I'm pretty numb to it at this point. I've been dealing with it a lot. Um, My biggest thing is just, you know, ask questions, maybe do some digging into the case, realize that there's a lot of this that was labeled confidential. Unfortunately, there's other women involved and I am so confident in, you know, and I was fully prepared to go to trial and to do all those things. And he is the one, you know, that has never been testified under oath. He's never been questioned, cross-examined publicly. And I am the one that has been. Um, So there's just so much. I think that uh, another key ruling in the civil process that had also taken place when he was trying to dismiss my counterclaims was that Judge Selna in California, he did rule that, because Trevor makes this whole argument about the restraining order hearing. Yeah, not not being granted. uh, um, keep, yeah, keeping in mind that the police didn't give me that cold call transcript between me and him uh, till about 14 months later. I wasn't even able to use that cold call as evidence in my restraining order trial. Um, so, Judge Selma, well, Were you really said, worried, though, Lindsay? Now I'm not trying to cut you off. I mean, do you think he was going to come and hurt you again? You were worried for your safety? Seriously? At that point, I was way more concerned with him not contacting me. Okay. And it was just a trippy time for me because I had already cooperated with him. But he never hit you, though, outside of anything that you're doing with, you know, in the bedroom, right? I mean, he was never like, oh, you Snapchatted a guy and hit you, right? I mean, everything was, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Just want to make sure. like that. So that, I mean, it's super valid. I think people have a lot of questions about their restraining order as well. Um, it was more so of you know, that fear of like, well, you know, I can just secure a no contact order, you know, if he does find out I'm talking to the police and whatever, you know, he wants to do. And then, you know, come to find out later that another woman in Ohio, just a year before me had had a temporary restraining order um, against him, which I feel like also is not talked about as much in this pattern of behavior. Um, So I do think that's, that's all very valid. But what, you know, I was saying is ultimately I got that vindication when the judge in our civil case ruled that Trevor was not cleared of any wrongdoing in the restraining order hearing. And that was a, a judge's ruling. Okay, so what hurts your feelings the most? And they call you Lindsay Smollett or when they call you uh, Kobe Bryant's accuser. Which one do you uh, piss you off the most? Oh my gosh. I mean, like I said, I do, I have always, and it's gotten me in a lot of trouble by coping with humor skills. Um, that's what gets me through. Uh, so Smollett's a pretty, pretty gnarly one. I know the Smollett one's good. I kind of like the Smollett. Okay. So now we have an investigative journalist. This is Sarah Fields. I'm sure Sarah wants to ask you a question. So Sarah, please, what question do you have for Lindsay? Um, I actually, I don't have a whole lot of questions. I just, um, I mean, these text messages are incredibly concerning and it doesn't really feel like something that should be joked around about. Um, but I mean, were you granted a restraining order? No. You were not granted a restraining order because like, okay, so I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to call you a liar because I don't think that that would be appropriate. But what I will say is that if anybody ever accuses someone of something so horrific and it's it's not actually true that would be the most disgusting thing because this man's career uh has potentially been completely destroyed his future has been completely stained and that is very bothersome to me as someone who is a dv victim myself a dv survivor as well as uh my daughter is also a survivor of a horrific thing that we came out of and i was myself accused of something that i absolutely did not do and that was horrific in itself it caused trauma and it caused ptsd not just to me but to my entire family 
Um, and now a lot of that is out in the open. And it's that it's brought that trauma back all over again of what I went through in my marriage with my abusive ex-husband, who now, uh, years later, we've been finally exonerated. And it's been proven that everything we did say was true because now he sits in a prison cell for 15 years in a, a actually not far from here, believe it or not. Um, and it should be longer than that. But I think that anyone who accuses someone of doing something like this and uh, and is not telling the truth because they're putting money over life, they uh, value money over the life of someone else, belongs in a jail cell right next to my ex-husband. Do you agree that fake sexual assault accusers should go to prison, Lindsay? I absolutely do. And I think there's a big reason that that has never happened to me in two and a half years because of all of the different evidence that has been laid out there. I mean, I, I certainly am of the opinion that something happened. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and call you a liar. Now, everybody on the right wing, they're coming after you. They're calling you a whore. They're saying you're a cleat chaser because you were texting some other baseball player, this and that. You know, I'm just saying, you know, that's what you're going to get. My whole problem with this situation, though, it's like nobody wins. You lose. He loses. You had a bad thing. It's like, how do we fix the situation? Or is your life always going to be stained? Is his life always going to be stained? How are you going to try to move on from all of this, Lindsay? Um, I'm just finally really, really relieved to, to be done with it. And um, at the end of the day, I just have so much confidence in knowing that the things that will keep coming out, no matter how they come out, um, just reveals the the actuality of the situation so much more than a four minute video. Um, and I, you know, he has another trial with another um, accuser that's actually scheduled for May in Arizona. And I think a lot will come out uh, in that trial as well. Um, so I think that what I have to do is, you know, step back. There's a lot of things that I absolutely have to work on. Um, but it's time for me to, to step back and finally close this chapter of my life and, you know, let karma do the rest for sure. Well, Lindsay, you're in great shape. You don't need to work on your body much, but you probably do need to work on your little mental health a little bit from this. I mean, I know how this goes, but so, I mean, when it comes to all of the allegations, we're talking about the legal stuff that's, you know, weighing on him and the, you know, future potential stuff. Are you satisfied with this outcome? I mean, I would think that if I was an assault victim, I wouldn't be satisfied. But how do you actually feel right now after everything now is kind of almost over? Yeah, like I said, um, I was more than willing to go to trial, more than confident um, in what that would have portrayed and revealed um, on a public scale. But I really, especially over the last year or so, have just completely crumbled and my soul has been, you know, crushed by litigation and all of this stuff. And I just made the decision that nothing is worth, um, you know, public vindication or anything like that. What I was going through and feeling um, at the moment so I, I just had to make that decision that um, mental health, my mental health and my healing is more, more important to me than getting every single thing public and really bringing the truth to the situation. And then Trevor mentioned a thing that's, you know, very personal. He's, he's talked about how you're going to Alcoholics Anonymous. So when you and Trevor would hang out, did y'all drink a lot? I'm guessing was that a big part of the relationship drinking? Uh, because, you know, when you're drunk, you know, you are impulsive. Was alcohol a, a big part of this in your opinion? Um, so I actually, when I met Trevor, I had not drank in 18 months mm. and, um, I was really heavy into AA and really doing well at that point. So you were sober um, when you met him. Yes, I was. Um, and that was a really, you know, before that, a good time of my life. Um, I learned a lot. I tried to start getting sober in 2019. Um, so, uh, it, my sobriety has taken a toll and I have fallen on my face and, you know, I'm pretty sure everyone's seen the Morgan Wallen video. Yes, we have the Morgan Wallen video. Let's play a clip of it. Oh my gosh, Lindsay, let's play a clip of this video. We're only going to play 10 seconds of it. Let's show it. This video, even though you look good in the outfit. Okay, let's play it, Jimmy. Yeah, it. Lindsay, you look hot. But who are you mad at in this video? I don't get it. I don't think this video is that bad. I mean, you just look a little buzz. Yeah, why are you drinking Bud Light? What are you doing with that Bud Light, Lindsay? I didn't know you were a lesbian. I thought you were a heterosexual. What the heck? Now the conservatives are really going to come after your ass. That was smart. 
So now, now you're at the concert drinking the gay beer at the Morgan. I don't know. That's enough of that clip. I don't even think that clip's that bad. I've acted way worse at a concert. Why is that even going viral, Jimmy? Why is that? Clip um, because she's holding Bud Light and she's acting. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll be honest. You've you never look, acted way, you look Jimmy. annoying and wasted. Jimmy, I wasn't there. Jimmy, remember when you oh, got yeah. drunk on set and you kissed Darius? Yeah, but I mean, and with my Bud Light, so I guess it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So okay, but let's let Lindsay answer this. So what do you say about uh, Lindsay? Are you drinking now? Are you sober now? Because if you are drinking, please call me. I want to hang out. I, I want to deal with drunk Lindsay, not sober one. But uh, what, what, what are you up to these Around. days? Yeah, no, that I have absolutely, like I said, fallen on my face with sobriety, um, you know, this one entire year. Um, and I recently, um, I went to treatment in May and I'm really trying to work on it and stay sober, um, which is another huge reason why, you know, agreeing to a settlement and just throwing my hands up and um, just putting me first. But no, I'm a terrible drinker. And, you know, that was one of the uh, number one defenses in this case is that, you know, she's an alcoholic and blah, 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 blah. But um, I'm really, you know, proud of myself for the chunks of sobriety I had um, during that time. And anyone with a family member that deals with addiction, um, you know, can relate to those things. And um, you just got to own it. Um, but I will say the, the Bud Light thing happened in March and that was way before there was any. Okay, good. I'll, I'll let you you go on that okay so now before you go all the people are going to kill me because they said they wanted me to just cut your head off i don't want to cut your head off Lindsay. but if you are lying if all of this is fake i'm just gonna be honest you're a disgusting human being that deserves to go to jail but i i don't necessarily think that's the case i know trevor bauer has a huge platform he's gonna be able to get his story out there more than yours so that's why i invited you on because i wanted you to be able to tell your side of it now people are probably not going to be satisfied they're going to say oh why didn't you do this why didn't you do that why didn't you kill her because i think that there's three sides to the story her side his side and the truth and for me i'm not going to get mad at you or him for doing what i don't know happened right so i just wanted to be able to give you this platform and for the people that are watching this that are mad that i didn't kill Lindsay, she's a hot babe what do you i mean what am i going to do cuss her out so what are you going to do now uh -oh, are, Al alex what? can i sorry to interrupt no questions and it's not a question well it's kind of i i got a super chat we're supposed to read them all it's kind of inappropriate Lindsay. do you want me to read it it's not anything mean it's just weird what is it read it is okay it connor o'brien has said a super chat says did she swallow oh my gosh <laughs> don't jimmy i i so you don't have to she, answer that but we would I guess, appreciate it you don't, don't have to answer, you don't have to answer have, anything i'm contractually obligated to read that he is obligated to read those super chats don't show jimmy anymore please don't show jimmy anymore i'm sick of jimmy uh do you uh, uh did you swallow or spit or <laughs> I don't think we ever did that, to be honest with you. What a bummer, because that's my favorite thing to do. But uh, okay, bullshit. You did all that freaky stuff, and you didn't once do Stop, that? Stop, Jimmy. You do not like, confront no, our no, beautiful that's guests. That's ridiculous. That Jimmy, she didn't so swallow. Is... Deal with it. She's with Trevor Bauer, that's a pro lie. baseball player. There's no Jimmy, way. they were beating each other up. They exactly. didn't have time to swallow like, each other's like ejaculate, like okay? okay? Gosh, Jimmy, get, your free, get a grip, dude. All right, Lindsay, we're going to bring you back on, hopefully, in the future if the story blows up. But I'm happy that you had the courage to come on. That makes you think that you're telling the truth more than all these people that are calling you a liar so the last thing i want to say is um do you have an only fans by chance i would love to join it uh because i uh, i don't know if you have one unfortunately no only fans um yeah. i can only imagine how that would have played out for me with all of this so i'm so sorry about you that. might want to join one real quick we could i could get you going i think we could get i mean he's got 60 million hits if we put that only fans link underneath that tweet you're gonna be rich bitch and i mean that you're too much. Well, I really appreciate you guys, and um, I, everything that I said tonight is really important. Um, and like I said, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't confident. And you know, the the actual facts of the case, the ones that haven't been confidential, um, the ones that have been that people just haven't uh, taken the time to really dig into. So I really appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you, Lindsay. Keep us posted. We want to talk to you again. We really want to keep you. Um in our thoughts and prayers. And if you do decide to make an OnlyFans, make sure to text me that link. All right, thank you, Lindsay. See ya. Wow, that was crazy. What, Sarah, do you mad that I didn't go more hard on her? Uh, no, because honestly, after everything that I've been through, I understand how things can be spun in one direction or another. And I think maybe with time, will know more of the truth. I'm not going to lie and say that it's not weird. Like the whole thing is very bizarre. Yeah, she, I think the, she, the posting the video and then saying later on as she's driving home is when the bruises started to appear, even though it happened the night before. But That's, no, bruises do take a minute because I get punched in boxing. Well, uh, four, four hours but, later, though. But 
Yeah. Like, what do you mean four hours later? Like, sometimes so, so, bruise, so, listen, we're not a science thing, weird. but I mean, I, I'm not even trying but, to defend her right now. I'm just saying, Jimmy, you played football, you'd get hit, and that night I wouldn't have a bruise, and the next morning I'd have a huge bruise on my thigh. That, oh, yeah, yeah, that exactly. She you. said it was the next morning, four hours later. Like, there would... Well, if they're my, up till my, two in the morning banging or something. I mean, yeah, <laughs> four hours later, I would think there'd be something there. I'm Like I said, I'm not... I don't know what happened, but that seems a little sketchy. And then it also, a neutral, neutral judge said her evidence was not credible. And but to be out. fair, Trevor Bauer has probably the best lawyers in the entire world on his side. Yeah. I'm just, we forgot to ask about her lawyers. And she I know. I, I, there's so much stuff we're going to talk to her about. I would talk to her for the whole hour. We only had her for 25 minutes. Right. And she wasn't able to get a restraining order, which those are actually really easy to obtain. Well, so. yeah, that's something that Trevor said in the video, that they're okay. so easy Everybody to obtain. Everybody says it's so easy to obtain, but also if you're a professional athlete, they know that anytime you have a job application or anytime you have a record pull up, if you have a TRO to temporary restraining order against mm -hmm. you. It's on your permanent criminal history. So I think that if you're a good enough attorney, which I deal with attorneys too much, to be honest, if you went to a judge and said, hey, this is going to have a, uh, you know, a, a scar on his permanent record, it's very important that you don't grant this TRO. A judge talking to a smart enough attorney will would listen to him. So I mean, I'm, right. I'm just saying it's not. This isn't Joe Blow, AC HVAC repairman. This is a professional baseball player that had million dollars uh, worth of endorsement. So I think that the judge would probably give him a little more leeway in not granting a restraining order.